Hi everyone, Scottish Warren 92 here with a video review. I'm going to give you my overall review on Skyrim. Or if you want the full title, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I'm going to give you my overall review on this, tell you what I thought of the game, story wise, gameplay wise, music wise, graphics wise, the whole shebang. And tell you whether or not this game is worth your money, or you should just tell it to go fuck. So, let me just start get this review started. Um, also, I apologise to everyone out there. I'm sorry I haven't made a video in the past two days. Um, I just, I have really bad trouble sleeping and but three days, but for the past several days now I've had really bad sleeping. Two days ago it was really bad. I was lucky if I got three or four hours sleep in the past two days. Um, so last night I just, I, I made this review last night and it was shit. It was horrible. I looked stoned at my nut. Um, so I didn't put it up. I wanted to give you promise I'll wait to sleep early. I've had over 14 hours sleep. I am not shitting you, so I feel refreshed. I'm still feeling a bit groggy, uh, but I'm going to give you my thought. You deserve this review. So let's get this review started with the story. Now, the story in Skyrim is a bit, actually a bit complicated to review because there is so much story in this game. But I'll just go over the main story quickly. I'm not going to give this is going to be a spoiler free review. Don't worry about this. I'm just going to give my review of the story. Um, the story is basically that dragons have returned uh, to Skyrim um, uh, after being extinct for nearly two millennia, I think it is, uh, which is roughly 2,000 years. If I'm going by the mythos, I could be wrong, I probably am, but from what I read through the story. And basically, you are a dragonborn who has the similar ability of a dragon to the shout, which I'll go into in the gameplay. Um, magical words of power, if you will. And your whole goal is to figure out why the dragons are returning, who's controlling them, and what the fuck is going on. That is plain and simple. The story is very well done, I must admit. Um, not the best story in a role-playing game I've ever seen, but still a pretty damn decent story. And then after you've done the main quest, there are a lot of side missions as well that have that have just as good stories as the main quest, or even better stories than the main quest, especially um, the Thieves Girl, the Companions quests, um, the Dark Brotherhood, there are shit lots of stories in this game that are just as good as the main story, but don't take away from the main story enough, but there are a lot of great stories in this game, not only the main quest, but a lot of side quests as well, which I really did like. There's a lot of variety to stories. Some stories are more action-packed, where you go in guns blazing. Some stories are more stealthy. You have to be quite quiet, stealthy. But it all depends on the type of game that you game that you get game style that you're accustomed to. So the story is very well done. Um, I give it major props. It's not as good as other stories of this year, but still a pretty damn good story for that. Now the gameplay. Ugh. The gameplay in this game is very well done. It's a major improvement from Oblivion. Oblivion, I admit, I did enjoy the story of Oblivion, but I did not enjoy the gameplay and I did not complete Oblivion. I couldn't get past a certain point because the gameplay was so broken, if I'm going to be honest, from the way, from, from my style of gameplay, and for others it was absolutely perfect. From my style of gameplay, it was very broken, and the third person mode especially was extremely broken. Uh, but I also diverse that this game has the most variety of gameplay in it I've ever seen. Um, from the start of the game, you can decide. I would recommend anyone from the start of the game decide what type of fighting style you're going to go for or fighting gameplay you're going for from the get-go. Because the leveling up system in this game doesn't level up like a traditional RPG, like you gain experience and then you put points in it. It gains by your use of certain abilities. If you use melee attacks, your melee abilities go up. If you use magic, your magic abilities go up. If you use art, stealth, your st stealth abilities, your stealth abilities will go up. But each each of these, like melee, magic, and stealth, have several uh, low, several subclasses as well. Like you've got one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, blocking, uh, destruction magic, there's restoration magic, illusion magic, archery, sneak, speech. There's a whole variety of stuff in this game that you can play with. And to be perfectly honest, this game has the most variety of gameplay I've seen this year. You can play through this game as a stealthy character, you can play through this game as a hardcore brute in this game, you can play through as a, 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 a mage, an archer, 
the whole shebang. And it also comes into play what class you choose, sorry, what race you choose, and sorry, you guys. There are, I think there's in total, I think, seven or eight races in this game that you can choose from. From the Argonian, which is the lizard people, right down to the wood elves. And they are very well done. They're, they're all humanoid except for the lizards, the Argonians, and the Khajiit, which are furries. Sorry, cats. Cats. <laughs> Um, and each race has their own sub-ability, like they, each one has a special ability. The Argonians can breathe underwater, which is the main reason why I chose them. Um, some enemies are better, some classes are better with speech, some classes are better with um, uh, smithying. Each class gets a, each race gets a bonus to certain abilities, and each race has their own like special ability, like as it says, they're going with war breathing. The dark elves with their wrath of the ancestors, which is some kind of fire ability, um, and it's really cool. It really put it to play sounds like I intend to go back and replay this game as a different race eventually. Um, and each race will, will be slightly better at other things than other races. Um, in particular. But it doesn't really matter what race you choose, because you have to really think how you're going to play this game, as, as I say, melee, stealth, or magic. And you have to constantly use an ability. Like, I'll use my character as I bonus. My character was an, a battle mage. He used magic, but he also used melee. And mainly one-handed weapons. So in one hand, which I really did, like each hand you can equip different things in. One hand had magic in his hand, the other one had um, a sword. And then, of course, you can enchant the sword, which I'll get into a wee bit later. But you see, there's so much variety. Like, in the one hand, I'm using fire, ma I'm using fire, frost, destruction magic. I'm using health magic, he restoration magic, healing. But at the same time, I'm hacking and slashing my way through enemies, which I really do like. It was really, really well done. I love that feature. And then, of course, occasionally I did switch to archery for stealth. And this game will adapt to how you play it. Um, you also have to put a lot of thought into this game. This game isn't one you can just rush in. You have to put a lot of thought into this game, which I really do like. You have to think, like, how do I get by this enemy with my style of fighting? If you're a hack and slasher, you're going to have no problem. You're just going to go in there, hack, slash, done, dusted, get out. And if you're a stealthy character, you're going to be sneaking a lot, drinking some potions, uh, talking your way out of situations, which is really well done. And that's the combat style of it, which is really quite well done. So if I'm going to recommend anything, I'd recommend that you think what style of combat you're going to play. Are you going to be a stealthy character, a brute, or a combination character, which I was. I was a, ma I was a battle mage. Sword, magic. Can't beat it. Um, now, why I also talk another wee thing about this? Um, also, there's other things like alchemy, uh, and ar arcane, and blacksmithing. Each of these allow you to create uh, alchemy, of course, potions, which I didn't really divulge much into. I did only really make health potions and magic and stamina potions, but you can get really into alchemy. There's a, quite a variety of potions you can make into this. Um, arcane, which is the enchanting. You can enchant items. Every item, you, Some items you'll find in dungeons, and they'll have an enchantment, but you don't like the armor on it. You'd say it's a glass piece of armor. You don't like it, and you're like, I don't like it, it doesn't give me that much of a boost, but the ability it has is amazing. You can disenchant it, which will destroy the item, but you learn that enchantment, and you can put it onto another item that you constantly wear. Which I really do love, and as you do it, you get better the enchantment, and stuff just flows like that. And you can get enchantments of damage, increasing your stats, uh, increasing your chance of better lock picking, a whole variety of stuff which I really do like. But then you've also got smithing, which I'd recommend anyone to try and get up to the max because you get dragon armor and dragon scale armor, which actually is the best armor in my opinion. Really cool. I've not got Daedric armor, that is a really tough one to make. Um, but what, I, what I'd recommend, you do get a lot of dragon bones and dragon scales in this game, and I'm going to give you a little tip. If you want to help get your um, smithing up to max level, you can do it one way. You can just make a shitload of iron daggers. It's going to cost you a lot of money for iron ingots and leather strips, but make a shitload of iron daggers and your smithing will be up to 100 in no time. And you can make your own, and of course with the smithing you can make your own armors from leather all the way up to dragon to daedric, a whole shitload of armor and a lot of weapons as well. I'm a bit disappointed you can't make dragon weapons. I really would like the dra one handed dragon sword if I'm going to be honest. Just me personally. Um, but I really did like that. 
But then you've also got like the lock pick in another, which is straight out, right out of Fallout 3, which I fucking would have. Well, thank God, trust me, the lock picking in Oblivion was shit. I, I never got the hang of it. I much rather prefer Oblivion. Uh, sorry, uh, Skyrim's lock picking, which is Fallout 3 style, uh, which is just like you have a pen and you have a screwdriver basically just tweaking to open it, and it's really, really cool. I did love that. Um, so that's really it for the gameplay. The gameplay is very, very, very good. I'll also say it does take a while to pick up. It's not, there's still a lot that they can improve on um, from this. They've improved a lot from Oblivion, but there's still quite a few things they can improve uh, in this for the gameplay um, with Skyrim. Still very combat stuff they can improve on. Um, I would like it if you could actually view the equipment on your character before you equip it. You have to actually equip it, then exit your menu to view the equipment that you've just uh, attached in third person. I would like it if there was some kind of on-screen inventory thing where you got to view the armor on your character before you left the menu, which I would like if they had that. Um, all of these tiny things that I think they could improve on, but otherwise the gameplay is very well done. Now I've got into also the music and the graphics of this game. The music and the graphics of this game are outstanding. I fucking love the soundtrack of this game. It's very well done. They could have easily just done a full orchestra, but they went the extra mile and actually had people sing in the native language to Skyrim, which is the North. Which I'm pretty much convinced the North are Scottish, because every screenshot of them has that half-blue face with a fucking sword going, ah! So maybe they're Scottish, the North of Scotland. Skyrim, Scotland. He! <laughs> I had to get that in there. Um, but I really did like the music in this game. I am going to be buying the soundtrack to this game as soon as I can, as soon as it's available. I think it is available, I'm going to buy it. Because it is very well done. The music is so fucking epic. It makes you feel so epic. Like, if you could play that music eating breakfast and it would make you feel seem epic. But it's so, it's so amazing, the music in this. It really adds a lot to the game. I, that is why you play That is what makes the atmosphere in a game. Same with movies and TV series, but we're talking about gaming here. And I really would like it. Really love the music in this game. It adds a lot to it, especially since it's their own custom soundtrack. So a major props to Bethesda for the music in this. It's absolutely outstanding. Um, the graphics as well on Xbox, absolutely gorgeous. Snow is amazing in this game. It looks brilliant. Um, obviously, if you've got the PC version, it's going to be a lot better on PC. But as an Xbox game, this game is beautiful. The graphics are amazing. The dragons are detailed to hell. So a lot of the, uh, a lot of the NPCs, a lot of them are very well done. The graphics are outstanding, I'll get that. There are some major texture pop problems as well at certain points in the game, I'll say that right now. But that's a completely separate thing I'm going to talk about, the glitches next. But the graphics and music in this game are outstanding, and I love them every bit. Now let's get to the bad things about this game. The fucking glitches! I don't know what it is with Bethesda. No matter what game of theirs I've got, it has had glitches galore. Oblivion, not so much. Oblivion, I didn't get far enough to find any glitches, but Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas had a lot of glitches. This is no exception. This game is filled with glitches. Um, there are texture pop glitches, there are audio glitches. At one point in the game, the music cuts off and there's just this loud, long, monotoned in the game, and it lasted for a full five minutes. I had to reload the whole game just to stop it. Um, that was really annoying. There are places where you'll get stuck. There are places that will, well, basically the entire graphics disappear and let you are standing in midair and you have to fast travel somewhere for it to go away. There are major texture pop glitches. Not extreme. Not like it doesn't happen that often, but when it does happen, it happens in a big way. And um, the audio glitches, like voices won't come out properly. People's mouths will move and nothing will come out. Um, a lot of glitches that I can kind of let away, I don't mind text pop glitches or audio glitches, I can let them away with that. But, I understand they are coming up with a patch fairly shortly to fix all these problems for Xbox, PS3 and PC's probably got them already fixed. But it's just the other glitches as well, there are glitches where enemies f are flying away, there are ones where there are enemies flowing in mid-air, there are ones where a dragon literally falls out of the sky dead, and you're like, where the fuck did you come from? In fact, it landed on me and killed me. What the fuck? Uh, the glitches in this game are unbelievable. Um, 
Look, none of none of the ones I've mentioned so far take away from the experience, but there are a few that do. There are. Um, I've only crashed once while playing this game. I'll say that right now while playing it. Um, so that's not a major problem. I mean, the crash it did get was annoying, but I did lose a pretty damn awesome piece of armor because of it. But there, there are a lot of other glitches that I actually take away. There's actually one glitch in this Xbox version that I've got. For the Xbox version, I'm not sure if it's at present in the other versions. But where, when you're halfway through a set of guild quests by the companions, I don't want to spoil too much, but you get about halfway through the quest for the companions, and you can't go any further. They, they, they won't, the, the next part of the quest doesn't even work. And I'm really gutted because I was really enjoying the, the um, companion story. I, that's one of my favourite stories in the game. And there are a lot of other ones as well. There are ones where your companions die too easily. Uh, another other thing I want to say, I don't know if it is meant to be, but in my honest opinion, the giants are overpowered. The giants in this game, which is an enemy class, are more powerful than the dragons. I'm not kidding you. The dragons at least don't kill you in one hit. Well, the Giants, they kill you in one hit and send you fucking 5,000 feet in the air. Is that a glitch or is that meant to be in the game? Because I honestly don't think the Giants are meant to be that fucking overpowered. So I just avoid the Giants at all fucking costs. So, thanks that. Uh, hopefully this patch does come out fairly shortly. I'm, I, I am going to have to take a couple of the glitches into consideration for my score. But one main reason is they are too obvious. I do not know how they've missed these glitches. And um, so, what can I give the game in the overall experience? Minus some of the glitches that I can let away with, um, and all the ones I can, I'd have to give this game a 9. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. It's an absolutely amazing game and a must buy, and a game of the year contender, I will say that right now. If you haven't picked this game up yet, go and pick it up, it's an absolutely amazing game. If you're not into the hardcore RPG, I'd probably avoid this game, because this game is pandered to RPG players. And if you're like one of these guys that plays Call of Duties or uh, fucking all these other games out there, I would not tell you to pick this up because you will not like it. This is the pinnacle of an RPG game. If you want a good RPG, pick this up, because this game is near enough the perfect RPG, minus a few couple other things I'm going to that are very, very, very noticeable. So overall, 9 out of 10, a must buy and definitely earns the Scottish Warrior seal of approval. I'd recommend anyone to go and pick this game up for the sheer fun of it and the amount of replayability. You will be playing this game for weeks if not months after its release. So overall, 9 out of 10, a recommended game, a possible game of the year, not game of the year overall, I had a lot of competition from Deus Ex, Batman Arkham City, Uncharted 3, a whole lot of games. But as a game of the year contender. So yeah, overall, pick this game up, enjoy it, have a lot of fun, and definitely worth your money. And as always, hopefully they fix these fucking glitches in it, because they did take away from the experience a little bit. So overall, see you all later. Ciao for